every scene with Scarlett Johansson in that skin suit. Ah. <sighs> Ghost in the Shell, the 2017 live-action adaptation, is directed by Rupert Sanders, written by Jamie Moss and William Wheeler, and it stars Scott Johansson, Pillow Asbeck, Juliette Binoche, and Chin Han, among others. This takes place in the future, where a police force named Section 9 is after a man who is hacking into the net because he's trying to find out information about certain people he wants to kill. This is in a way connected to the major played by Scarlett Johansson and now this police force must find this menacing villain who is taking over the net. I'm a huge fan of the Ghost in the Shell franchise. I have seen every movie, every anime series, I have even read the manga and I don't do that with most anime slash anime movies I watch. Ghost in the Shell is visually impressive. It is directed greatly, and I'm a fan of Rupert Sanders ever since Snow White and the Huntsman. I think that movie is great. I think that movie's only problem is Kristen Stewart, and you guys know I like Kristen Stewart. Ghost in the Shell features impressive world building, impressive visuals, and not one single special effect in this film looks bad. I would say these special effects are Academy nomination worthy and they are probably not going to be nominated because this movie is not going to be well received. Rupert Sanders directs this movie very well. He presents interesting characters, he presents interesting concepts, he presents an interesting story that you want to find out more about. He directs his actors very well. I thought the all-around cast was really good in this film and he can film action. These are not the best action scenes, but he can film action. He can also film great thrilling action sequences, like chase sequences, like we see before Makoto Kusanagi beats up that guy above the water where she goes invisible. The writing is also solid all around. I think the story connects well to itself, I think the story is approached the right way because of the story they were trying to tell, and they are faithful to the source material Majorly. As I said, I'm a huge fan of the Ghost in the Shell franchise. I've seen every movie, every series. Ghost in the Shell is tricky because its flaws are only flaws because it is Ghost in the Shell. If you have not seen my Ghost in the Shell, the original movie, review, that is on the channel right now and I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. Ghost in the Shell, the original film, is a heavy sci-fi based themed movie that presents interesting ideas and concept and is thought-provoking in every way, in the characters, in the way the characters are written, in the world it presents, in how this world came to be and what this world may become. Ghost in the Shell, the 2017 movie, is that, but it doesn't go to the thought-provoking area that the original movie finds itself in. Ghost in the Shell, the 2017 movie, doesn't go into the thought-provoking, high-intelligent and high-concept heavy sci-fi realm that the original movie goes to. It sticks with being a police thriller, and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is that it approaches the original story, but in the route that Ghost in the Shell Solid State Society or Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex the series approached. If you have seen the original Ghost in the Shell film, take my words. This is the original Ghost in the Shell movie for the most part, except with an approach of a police thriller, an action film. I said this in my original Ghost in the Shell movie review and I'll say it right now. Ghost in the Shell, the original film, is tremendously wonderful and full of depth and levels. And it also works as a fun popcorn film. Ghost in the Shell, the new movie, is a fun popcorn film. I think Scarlett Johansson is great as Major Kusanagi. She feels distant, she doesn't feel like she connects to you, but that's the intent. She at sometimes feels very robotic, but that's the intent. I thought she played this character as this character should be played. This is by no way her best performance, but by saying this, it only goes to show the work that this woman has done. I think she pulls off menacing very well, I think she pulls off action hero very well, I think she pulls off vulnerability very well, and innocence. I really like Scarlett Johansson in this role as the major, because she is not named Makoto Kusanagi. Bato was also great, I thought he had really great charisma and a great chemistry with Scarlett Johansson. These two really seemed like buds for a long time. There's one aspect of his characters that they don't show in the 
the trailers and I was surprised that they went there. I did not necessarily like it, but it did not really annoy me for the most part of the film. It never really changed anything except for one little thing that is a spoiler so I'll not talk about it. Togusa is in this film, thank god, he is played by Chin Han, a great great actor who was in The Dark Knight, and he is wasted. I like him because I know who Togusa is and I like that this actor is playing him, but he does nothing in the film. The villains in this film are not necessarily working together. The villains in this film also range from acceptable, fine, serviceable, to really really bad and generic. One of the villains is minimally displayed in the trailers and you get the perception that this guy is the villain. Yes, he is and he's okay. He's more of an antagonist than the villain and if you have been to screenwriting classes or to just writing classes, you know how to differentiate those two terms. This guy, played by Michael Pitt, he's an antagonist. He doesn't believe necessarily that he's the hero, but he also doesn't think of himself as the villain and if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. The other villain that is not displayed in the trailers at all is very predictable, is very generic. He does nothing. He makes you feel nothing and you know exactly what's going to happen to him. The movie does its best to look unique and visually impressive and 100% it does that. It also goes out of its way sometimes to recreate scenes from the original Ghost in the Shell. For instance, we have that incredible fighting scene in the water when Major Makoto Kusanagi goes and kicks the ass out of that garbage man and that scene is great in this film. Following that scene we have an interrogation of said garbage man and in this movie doesn't work at all because the scene that came previously in the original film to that fight scene in the water doesn't exist in this new film and so it comes out of nowhere and in my group of friends I was the only one who had ever seen Ghost in the Shell and they did not get what was happening at all. I really liked that scene because it reminded me of what I had seen but in this film it doesn't work. Also one of the most emblematic scenes is when the Major goes swimming and she comes to the surface and she has a great exchange with Bato in the boat about why she goes swimming. In this film for the most part, it works great. There is great dialogue in here, but it doesn't work so well because until that point, we don't have anything to define the characters in a way that we had in the original film. And I'm not comparing it to the original film. I'm comparing the scenes in the film that they came in. We don't have any construction to what that scene's true meaning is. We have a recreation of the scenes where the Major is looking onto the city, and those work just fine. We have a recreation of her assaults on some diplomats and that works fine even though in this film they are not diplomats. Also this film despite focusing for the most part on the original film's story, it also puts itself into a different timeline where people perceive things in a different way than in the original film. And that gives them great leeway to focus on different ideas and plot lines. And they do. And for this movie it worked. It's fine. It's not going to be a classic, it's not a masterpiece, not in directing, not in elements and themes and concepts explored. It's not approached in the same way. This is a solid, fun, sci-fi futuristic action movie. And in that way, it works. Ghost in the Shell has solid performances, fine directing, amazing, beautiful, incredible special effects. And because of that, I'm going to say that Ghost in the Shell is a martini. It is a good time, anytime. What did you think of Ghost in the Shell, my beautiful geekies? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? What do you think of the original Ghost in the Shell? And have you seen any of the other movies or TV shows? Let me know that in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to go join the beautiful Geeky Community Facebook group. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, my beautiful geekies. You guys are the freaking best. I love you all. And tomorrow, finally, my review for Smurfs, The Lost Village. I know you all want that one to come. So until tomorrow, you stay beautiful and you stay geeky. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and the bell so we can be geeky. United! <laughs>